Okay, we're here with the infamous George Toma, the field general, I like to call him, for the Super Bowl. Been to every Super Bowl. The man who takes care of the field. Uh, he's a legend as far as the Super Bowl preparations are concerned. George, you're still going strong. Here you are, Super Bowl 48. Could you ever have imagined you would be doing it this long? Uh, no, I haven't. Uh, I started the first one through uh, Commissioner Pete Rozelle. And I'm here in my, I'll be 85 years old on <laughs> Super Bowl Sunday, and this is, will be my 48th Super Bowl. Now, how much different is it with an artificial surface? You've got an artificial surface inside MetLife Stadium, but nonetheless, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done, right? Oh, well, yes, there's a lot of work. You have to fluff it up to get it soft enough for the players to play on, and uh, we have to work in between uh, rehearsals for halftime and pregame rehearsals, so uh, it's a tough challenge to get it ready, but uh, we'll blow heat underneath there for a day or two, and uh, it should be ready to go Sunday. Of all the Super Bowls you have worked, and you've been at every one of them, what was the most difficult field conditions that you had to get ready for a game? Well, I think it was the Super Bowl four or five with the Kansas City Chiefs against the uh, Minnesota Vikings at old, the old Sugar Bowl at Tulane University. We had tornado warnings, rain, and that time we only had a week between uh, games, and the field was pretty well beat up. Okay, so we took wood chips, sawdust, and wood clippings, and we scattered it all over the field and painted it green to make it look like grass. Whose logo is the toughest to paint into an end zone for a Super Bowl? Well, actually, they're all pretty easy nowadays. And, uh, there are, there's no tough ones for us. What was your biggest nightmare at any of the Super Bowls on the eve of the game? Was there one in particular where you got heavy rain or something that stood out in your mind? No, it was during Desert Storm. And during Desert Storm, was they just came up across the war in Iraq, and they, the halftime people had a change uh, from the regular TV, uh, regular halftime to patriotic halftime. And they roll, uh, they just wiped off the turf on the 50 yard line. We painted the logo, the NF logo, it wouldn't last. So everybody thought I was crazy. I said, we're gonna sod that area. We're gonna get a thousand square pieces of sod and we're gonna put it in. And they said, well, where are you gonna get sod or what are you gonna do? I said, don't worry, I'll get it. And uh, I said, just get the trucks, get the cars. And I left Eddie Mangan, a good, very excellent groundkeeper who is the field director for the Super Bowl now. And he's been with me 25 years. I tell him, you cut out a thousand square pieces, four inches deep, and I'm gonna bring you sod in cars and trunks or in trucks. <laughs> And so uh, they said, I said, follow me. And we took the head ground keeper, Kevin, from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I said, take me to Tampa University. They said, they got some beautiful sod over there on their soccer field. And it was about nine o'clock at night and it was dark. He said, the gate's locked. I said, I know the gate's locked. Back up and rammed the thing. So we stole a thousand square feet of sod from the long defense of Tampa University, sodded it. And by six o'clock in the morning, we were ready to go. So nothing was going in my life, nothing going to deface the NFL shield. And if we didn't do it, uh, it wouldn't last maybe three or four plays. And Tom Kaufman invited me in his office the other day, and he was there when I did it. And we, he was under Bill Parcells, so we were, we were missing about it. Of course, that was Super Bowl 25 between the Bills and the Giants. George Toma, thank you. NFL field guru and a legend. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Okay, now.